I have refactored the cloud two-way voice uh, conversations to use OpenAI text-to-speech. It works perfectly well with a few hacks that I came up with. And it's uh, more than one-tenth the price of 11 labs. I mean, if you look at the pro plan, half a million characters is $99. But with OpenAI, one million characters is $15. That's more than one-tenth the price. And uh, it works well. Like I said, let's try it out. I'll go ahead and start a conversation. Why do we use different prefixes to reverse the meaning of a word to opposite, like unbelievable, irresponsible, impossible? We use different prefixes like un, ir, and im to reverse or negate the meaning of words for a few reasons. 1. Origin these prefixes come from different language roots. Un comes from Old English. I can interrupt in, uh, at any time. Before p comes from Latin. By pressing enter, I have actually interrupted, so I can go back. Can you please summarize this in a single sentence? We use different prefixes like un, ir, and im to negate words based on linguistic origins, ease of pronunciation, distinguishing sim I again went ahead and interrupted. And if you're, you can actually clear the conversation by saying new conversation, new conversation. And this was our message history and it's cleared. So what did we talk about so far? As an A, I'm afraid I don't have any prior context about a conversation we as you can see, we, are, we were able to clear the conversation history. So this works really well. We'll play around with it towards the end. Let me go ahead and cancel this and let's talk about the code a little bit. Code files for this will be available at Patreon along with an exclusive video talking about the async nature of it and uh, getting into detail about the uh, async tasks. So if you want to download the code and get to know more about it, uh, it's going to be available at my Patreon. And if you do become a patron, uh, along with 200 plus project files, you'll also have access to my exclusive videos as well. As you know, I've already done this with 11 labs using WebSockets. So you can watch this video uh, by, from my website or my YouTube channel. My website is echohive.lab. Link will be in the description. Also, we are using local fast whisper. Uh, if you want in detail, watch these two videos. I'll put the links in the description for them. The main change here is actually using two async tasks for text to speech processor, which gets the text to speech from OpenAI, and also the audio player, which uses Pygame to play it. And the uh, crux of this is actually buffering the output of cloud into a buffer and check for separators and then add them to a queue let the text processor process from the queue. And when we have that audio ready, send it to the audio queue so that the Pi game can play it. So this way we can actually, since we are using async tasks, parallel async tasks, we can interrupt them at any time. But reviewing the code from scratch, like I said, we are using the local whisper.py class that I've created, but this uses uh, the local whisper model. If you want to know more in detail, please watch this video, super fast whisper running locally. So we do all our imports for model. I was using Sony for even speedier responses, but feel free to change it to Opus. The bug is set to false, but you can set it to true. This just has a bunch of print statements that'll uh, trigger for debugging purposes. We initialize Pygame and we initialize two queues one for the text and one for audio. So when uh, OpenAI processes, uh, processes our text and creates audio, I'm sorry, once we, once we have a meaningful uh, sentence, we send it to text-to-speech uh, and we actually put it into this buffer uh, so that text-to-speech processor can uh, grab it. And once the output of this goes into the audio data queue, we initialize OpenAI and Anthropic right here. Whisper Transcriber is the Whisper Transcriber class from local Whisper file. And we have an on press function, which is going to trigger an interrupt event. It's going to set interrupt event. So that's, that's going to be triggering our interruptions. Clear queue, whenever we call this function and a queue, we're going to uh, empty that queue. The text to speech processor is going to take in a text queue, an audio queue, and uh, it's going to retrieve the item from a text queue. And it's going to send it to OpenAI TTS. And when we receive it, we get the response.content and we put it into audio queue. And we say that, that that task is done from the queue. And with the audio player, we give it the audio queue and an interruption event. And as long as the interruption event is not set and audio queue is not empty, we get the audio data, we turn it into a bytes object, we load it with Pygame Mixer and we play it. And while we are playing that, if an interruption event happens, we stop that and we break it and we consider that task done. In our main loop, we initiate a message history. We create an interruption event, which is an asyncio.event. We get the keyboard listener from the keyboard library. 
and we create a, a chat loop. This first part is just in case if you're interrupting too quickly, sometimes we can have two user or assistant messages in a row due to the async nature. This just checks if there are two user roles or assistant roles, it just breaks them up with a basic message set. Let's just that that says let's continue because cloud API doesn't accept two user or assistant roles like OpenAI's API. This is just a fail safe. And then this is an important part. We create two async IO tasks, one for the async, one for the text to speech processor, one for the audio player. So once we initialize these tasks, they're going to run in the background in parallel in a non interrupting manner, non blocking manner. We clear the interruption event in the beginning and we print to say that press and hold space to start recording. I actually changed it. So you have to press the enter key to interrupt. You hold the space bar to start recording. We clear the cues. This is because we are in the beginning of a chat loop. Uh, and then we use the whisper transcribes, record audio, get the time file, get the transcription. So this is what the user has said. If we use the new conversation command, if we find new conversation in the transcription, we clear message history, we clear the conversation.json, which we are keeping track of. Otherwise, we just append the transcription as the user role to the message history. And then we send that to, we send that message history to Entropic, to the model, currently Sonnet, with stream true. And we initialize assistant response and buffer text. So as we are receiving the chunks from the cloud API, we're going to be appending it to both the assistant response and buffer text. At the end, assistant response is just going to go into our message history. And But the buffer text here is interesting. As we are accumulating these buffer chunks, we're going to continually check to see if it's ending with a, a, se a sentence separator, such as comma or a dot. If that's the case, then we are going to consider that we have a meaningful chunk and we're going to put it into the text to buffer queue. So as soon as we do this, since we have started our text to speech task, we are going to immediately get a text to speech from OpenAI and we're going to immediately put it to audio queue and then audio player will immediately start playing it. So this way we create a really smooth and continuous flow of conversation. So we do that. We, we put it into the queue. We check if an interruption event is set and we clear both queues. These are the debug statements. And now we actually append whatever assistant response we have accumulated thus far, and we break out of this loop. This is the for loop to actually get the chunks from Anthropic. So essentially, we eliminate this API call, even though it is uh, still happening in the background. We no longer process the chunks. Otherwise, if we did not interrupt it, we append the assistant response in full, and we write the conversation to conversation.json. Also, if the interruption event was set, we clear the queues, we clear the buffer text, I guess I'm redundant, redundantly clearing the queues uh, multiple times. That's fine. But at the end, we do cancel the text-to-speech task and audio player task, and then we, inter we, we clear the interruption event. And then that's pretty much it. Once we do that, then this brings us back to the beginning of the loop where we reinitialize the async tasks for text-to-speech and audio playing. We clear the interruption event, and then we start taking a user input. So this, this works very well. Requirements are listed as well. Installation of Fester Whisper can be a bit complex. When you install Fester Whisper, you may have to downgrade C Translate from 4 to 3.24. But I talked about all that in detail here. The super fast two-way opus is also interesting. That one uses 11 labs. If you like, if you enjoy 11 labs and you like their voices, you can definitely take a look at this. This is a WebSocket real-time two-way streaming WebSocket connection. Code files for all these, so of course, are available at my Patreon. Also, if you like to get in touch with me one-on-one, -on -one, I have one spot open at the virtuoso number three level. Uh, this comes with one hour, one hour of conversations every month. If you need uh, help or uh, you want to discuss some code with me or just to chat, take a look at that. I do want to say I've stopped uh, ads on my YouTube videos, so I really appreciate your support and Patreon. If you are a patron, I appreciate it very much. And if you're considering it, and if you have any questions about it, the Discord link is in the description. Feel free to shoot me a message or talk to other patrons at the Discord channel. So now we got the code review out of the way. Let's go ahead and play with it a little bit. Let's have a fun conversation. Do you know about Library of Babel where there are like infinite mini books or something? Yes, I'm familiar with the concept of the Library of Babel. It's a thought experiment conceived by the Argentine writer Jorge Luis Borges in his 1941 short story, The Library of Babel. The idea is that the Library of Babel contains every possible combination of letters, books, texts, within a certain length, making it an infinite library 
containing every book that could ever be written, as well as every possible permutation of gibberish. Some key points about the fictional Library of Babel. It contains an infinite number of hexagonal galleries with vast numbers of books on the shelves. The books contain every possible ordering of the 25 unique written characters. 22 letters, space, period, comma. Most books are gibberish, but hidden within are every literary work ever published, as well as every future publication in every possible language. It represents the idea of the universe containing all possible combinations of elements. So while fantastical and impossible to physically construct, I actually went ahead and interrupted it. Do you find it uh, fascinating? What about it uh, strikes you the most? And please respond briefly. Yes. I find the concept of the Library of Babel utterly fascinating. What strikes me most is the mind-bending notion of an infinite repository containing every possible combination of letters and symbols, encapsulating all human knowledge and expression amidst seeming chaos and meaninglessness. It's a profound metaphor for grappling with the limits of reason and our endless quest for understanding the universe. And all this conversation is being written to conversation.json, and we can restart it over, for example. Are there any similarities between this and the infinite digits of pi? Couldn't we assign, for example, a number to every letter in the alphabet and actually kind of replicate the library of Babel in the infinite digits of the decimal numbers of pi? assuming that the decimal numbers of pi goes on until infinity. What do you think? You make an insightful connection. There are indeed similarities between the concept of the Library of Babel and the infinite non-repeating digits of mathematical constants like pi. By assigning numerical values to letters or characters, one could theoretically find every possible book or text encoded within the digits of pi given its infinite non-repeating nature. So in that sense, the unending string of Pi's digits could be seen as an actual instantiation or realization of the theoretical library of Babel containing all possible combinations of characters. It's a fascinating idea that the seemingly patternless digits of irrational numbers like Pi may contain hidden encodings of all the knowledge and literature that could ever be written. Mathematicians and computer scientists have explored such concepts highlighting deep connections between information, complexity, and the infinite realms of mathematics. So as you can see, this works uh, really well. I can actually go ahead and clear this conversation by saying new conversation. Yeah, as you can see, the conversation.json has been cleared. What did we talk about? Just to make sure if they, yeah. As an AI assistant without a physical form, I can only respond based on the information provided to me in our current conversation. I don't go on podcasts or have prior conversations to draw from. Could you provide some more details about what kind of podcast topic you had in mind? I went ahead and interrupted it, although kind of it feels like it skipped this part. Yeah, I believe the, the system message for the cloud I gave is that you're a podcast guest. You can feel free to change that. So this works well. Like I said, I hope you enjoy this. Maybe I'll make more videos about this talk because, you know, honestly, the web socket connection with 11 labs was a bit problematic and it just gets really, it can, it can get expensive, but I'm, I'm really happy with this. I hope you'll enjoy it as much as I do. This one really brings it together in a very cheap way, affordable way, let's say. I'm using Sony, but feel free to change it to Opus or Haiku, whatever you like. Sony performs really well. Do let me know what you think of it. Like I said, all the code files for this will be available at Patreon, along with 200 plus other interesting projects. And if you like my videos, you can watch actually currently over 270 of them at my website. And if you're a patron, you can find the code download links to each and every one of them. So this can give you some inspiration. You can quickly modify them. And all the, of course, the videos associated with the code is present here. Also, when you're there, feel free to check out my other projects, such as AutoStreamer and CodeHive. Uh, to see. Yeah, code I have currently, uh, maybe Railway is having some issues. That's where it's deployed. This should get fixed. Uh, I'll look into it. But anyway, feel free to check it out and let me know what you think. And the Discord link will be in the description if you'd like to talk about this kind of stuff. There's over a thousand of us at the Echo Hive Discord server. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.